Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, then welcome. My name is Georgia and I'm a knitted crochet designer. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make the gorgeous open back crochet sweater that I just showed you. You do need to know how to crochet if you wanna make this jumper. And I'd say it's suitable for advanced beginners. I'll leave all the sizing info on the screen now so you can pause the video and have a look at which size you think would best suit you. If you prefer a PDF version of a pattern, so rather than looking at the video, um, you like it all written down like in a document, then I do have that. I'll leave the link in the description below and that will take you through to my website where you can purchase the pattern if you want to. I try to keep my patterns really affordable for everyone because I know not everyone likes the video format. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and maybe even subscribe as well if you want to see more tutorials from me. Um, but without any more babbling, let's get crafting. Okay, so this is the yarn that I'm going to be using. I use the Knitting Essentials Worsted Cotton from Poundland. So if you're in the UK, it is a great budget yarn. You also need a 55 millimeter crochet hook or the size needed to obtain the gauge, which I'll leave on the screen now. You're also gonna need a darning needle, some scissors, a measuring tape, and two stitch markers. So we're gonna start with the front panel. As always, you need to start off by making a slip knot, and we're gonna make a beginning chain. I'm gonna leave all the instructions on the screen so that the video doesn't get too long. So now I've got my beginning chain. I'm gonna do a half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So you can see the third chain is there where I'm pointing to. Yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. That was pretty quick there, um, but you yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then when you've got three loops left on your hook, pull through all three. And you're gonna continue to do that along the whole chain. So here is what mine is looking like. I'm gonna leave a stitch count on the screen. You should have one stitch less than the beginning chain that we did. Now for row two, we're gonna chain two and turn the work. We're gonna half double crochet into the next stitch where my thumb is pointing to, not there, but there. So I did include in the notes that the beginning chain two counts as a stitch, which is why we go into the next stitch, not the same stitch. And then you're going to carry on with half double crochet in each stitch along the row. And the stitch count should stay the same for every single row now until we get to the shoulder shaping section. So here is what mine's looking like. Continue with that across the whole row. So I've just completed row two and I'm just showing you here what the end of that row should look like. Make sure you go into the last stitch and you have the same amount of stitches on every row. We don't want to accidentally be increasing or decreasing. Chain two and turn the work. Half double crochet into the next stitch and along the whole row. And we're gonna just keep repeating this. So on every row, chain two, turn, half double crochet in every single stitch across the row, making sure you've got the same amount of stitches in every row. And do this until your work measures whatever is presented on the screen now. Here is where I'm at. My work is now measuring the correct length. We are going to get started on the shoulder shaping section. So you don't need to cut the yarn or anything, we're just going to carry on from where we finished the main body section. Chain two and turn your work. We're going to start off the row as we have been for each one, but we're not going to go all the way across. So you chain two, you turn, and then half double crochet in the next however many stitches it says to do on the screen. So I've got my 35 stitches for this row and now we're going to chain two and turn the work. And now what we're going to do is start decreasing. So after you've done that chain two, into the next two stitches you're going to half double crochet two together. So yarn over, insert the hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop and then yarn over, insert the hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop. You should have five loops on your hook and then yarn over and pull through all five of those loops and that is one half double crochet two together and then you're just going to carry on with one half double crochet stitch into each stitch along to the end of the row so you've decreased by one stitch so you can see here i've done my second row of the shoulder shaping there is our 
half double crochet two together. So for the third row of the shoulder shape in, chain two, turn the work, half double crochet in the next stitch and in each stitch along until you have three stitches left. Just a little note, when you get three stitches left, it can look a little bit confusing. So remember the beginning chain two of the row before would be the last stitch of this row and then you've got two before that so I'll show you when we get there as it can be a bit hard to see it. So I've now got three stitches left and if you look closely I'll pause it here. Hopefully you can see I've got my three stitches left of the row. With those three stitches you are going to do a half double crochet two together and the stitches might be a little bit tight as you can see there. Five loops are left on the hook, we then pull through all five and then in the last stitch, in that very last stitch which was the chain two from the row before, we are going to do one more half double crochet in the top of that beginning chain two. And from this point forwards I'm going to try not to do my stitches so tight. So that is the third row of our shoulder shaping done and I'll just show you what that is looking like. Now I'm chaining two and turning the work for row four of our shoulder shaping section. For the fourth row, you're going to repeat row two. So you need to chain two and turn the work, half double crochet two together, and then half double crochet in each stitch to the end of the row. We are almost done with the shoulder shaping. For row five, you're going to repeat row three. So chain two and turn and then half double crochet in each stitch along until you have three stitches left, half double crochet two together, and then one half double crochet in the last stitch. I've just completed row five, and for the last row on the shoulder shaping section, that is a tongue twister, chain two and turn, and we're repeating row two, so half double crochet two together, and then half double crochet once in each stitch to the end of the row. Once you've done that and you know you've got the correct stitch count, you can fasten off. And your shoulder should be looking something like this. Now we're going to do the exact same again for the other shoulder. So you need to attach your yarn with a slip stitch to the other side of the row. You can see there's a chain two here, so you just want to join with a slip stitch to the second chain in that beginning chain two of that last body row that we did. You need to repeat the steps the exact same as you did before, so you can rewind the video and redo those. Here is what my front panel looks like, so that is all done. We can leave that, and now we're going to go on to the back panel. Starting again with a slip knot, we're going to do the instructions the exact same as they were for the front panel. So we're going to start off with our beginning chain, chain the exact same amount as you did before. I will leave it on the screen for you. And then, like I said, we're going to repeat the instructions the same as we did for the front panel. So I'll type that out and leave it on the screen for you. Just bear in mind, the length is different to the front panel. So just pay attention to that. So my work is now measuring 13 inches and we're going to go on to the open back section. There's no need to cut the yarn. We're just going to carry on from where we are now. So chain two and turn the work. You're going to half double crochet in the next stitch and in each stitch along until you get to halfway through the row. So we're only going to be working on one side for now and then we'll do the other side afterwards. So I'm halfway through the row and now what we're going to do is chain two and turn the work. Now you need to half double crochet two together just like we did before to make one decrease. And once you've done that, half double crochet in each stitch along to the end of the row. Now this section is going to be similar to the shoulder shaping section that we did. So we're going to chain two and turn the work. We're going to half double crochet in each stitch along until we have three stitches left on the row. Half double crochet two together and then do one half double crochet in the last stitch. So just quickly showing you, I've got three stitches left. There's one, there's two. And there's the third. We're going to do half double crochet two together and then half double crochet in the last stitch.
and there we are. So we're decreasing by one stitch on each row and you're going to repeat rows two and three until you have however many stitches left in the row that is displayed on the screen now. Sorry about the lighting, but I have 34 stitches now left on the row and this is what my work looks like. From now on, you're going to work back and forth without doing any decreases. So you chain two, turn, half double crochet in every stitch along and repeat that until your whole back panel measures however many inches is displayed on the screen. So your work should be looking something like this. And then obviously we need to work on the other side. So you need to attach your yarn with a slip stitch to the other side of the back panel. Just here where I'm showing you, there's a chain two there. So you want to go into the second chain of that chain two that's right on the edge. You're going to repeat the instructions from row one of the open back section. So, and go back and forth in the opposite direction to make a V shape going the other way, the same, you know, the opposite of what we've just done. So if you go back, you can follow the instructions exactly as they were before. Here is what the back panel should look like and we can leave it alone for now. We're going to go on to the sleeves. Right, so I don't want to make this video longer than it needs to be, but if you would have preferred me to go through this more slowly, then please let me know. The sleeves are really, really easy and so I just thought it was a bit pointless to go through it step by step. I'm just going to leave the instructions on the screen for this one. You need to make two sleeves the exact same. And here are both my sleeves. You should now have two sleeves, one front panel and one back panel. Now there is a little detail that we need to add to the back panel, which is the strap that goes across the back. Now you are going to have to ignore me getting in the frame. There was literally no other possible way to do it. We need to add the back strap and a border. So we're going to attach our yarn in this corner here and we're going to work down the V and up the other side. So start with the slip knot grab your hook and you're going to join the yarn with a slip stitch to that corner. So on the right side, you want to have the right side of your work facing you if you know which is the wrong side and the right side of the work. Have the right side facing you and join the yarn with a slip stitch to the very corner. So it's on the right side but on the inner corner. And you can see I'm just doing a slip stitch to attach the yarn there. From here, we're going to make one of the straps. So you're going to make a chain. Once you have that chain, you need to single crochet into the second chain from the hook and then along each chain until you get to the end. So there you can see my chain is just attached to that inner corner single crochet down this side of the work so you're going to be going into the ends of the rows now I haven't given a stitch count because you should just try and even out the stitches as much as you can so kind of like for every row you want to do one single crochet so I'm going to go right into that corner stitch single crochet and then just like evenly space out go into the next stitch and then into the next one. And if you've never done this before, it may take just a little while to get used to it um, and to make sure everything looks nice and neat. But it just gives the finished jumper a really nice professional look. So I'll just quickly show you what you can kind of expect that to look like. So I'm just working down that side and you can see the single crochets look nice and neat along there. I've been continuing with the single crochets down the V and when I got down to the bottom of the V shape I just started to go up the other side towards the other inner corner so I've gone down to the bottom and now I've just started to single crochet up and I'm going to continue until I get all the way up to that top corner. So I have done all the single crochets through the V and I think it looks really good. Now we just need to do the other strap. So from here, make a chain. And then same as before, you're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and all the way along. And then when you've gotten all the way along, you're just going to join with a slip stitch to the back panel. So I've done the chain all the way down and now I'm just going to join with a slip stitch. 
and once you've done that you can cut your yarn. Now we have one completed back panel with the straps attached. Now it is time to do the seaming. Now you can do this with a yarn needle or you can do it with your crochet hook. It's completely up to you. But one thing I will say is you do need to try and take your time with this bit because this can be the difference between a jumper that looks sloppy and a jumper that looks professional. Sorry to be savage, but it is the truth. It is worth taking the time on this bit. So what I'm doing here is I'm placing the two shoulder seams together. So I've got the front panel and the back panel and I've just placed the top of those panels together. Um, and you also want to have the wrong side facing up and the right side facing down if you know the difference. We are going to seam together the shoulders. So that bit where I'm pointing to now across there and then also on the other side as well. Something to note is, you may have noticed, there is four extra stitches on the shoulder section of the back panel when compared to the front panel. All the sizes have been done like that and I couldn't avoid it, so I will explain to you how to make it work. So you can see I'm just lining up those shoulder panels and making sure that they're lined up nicely. And as I said, the back panel does have four extra stitches on it. So it will seem slightly longer. Now you just need to try and spread out the stitches as evenly as you can. So I'm just using one of the tails for now um, from when I fastened off. And I'm just going to start joining those two panels together. And remember you can use a crochet hook if you prefer. I'm going to try my best to explain to you how to spread the stitches out evenly. So you need to do this four times throughout this section. So that is the next stitch on the front panel. And that is the next stitch on the back panel. That is the stitch that I just did last. Now you can see that I've gone into the same stitch as the last one I did for the front panel, but the next stitch for the one in the back panel. I really hope that makes sense. You need to do that four times for each shoulder. And then I'm gonna carry on doing a few normal ones going into the next stitch on both panels. And then when I get a bit further along, I'll do that same thing again where I go into the same stitch for the front panel, but the next stitch for the back panel. So you can see I'm getting towards the end of this section and the edges of the panels are lining up really nicely. So I'm just going to continue to join those together. And there we have it, everything is joined up. It looks nice and neat and pretty seamless. I am happy with that. So you can cut the yarn, fasten it off, and then we're gonna do the same again for the other side of the shoulders. So just to zoom out and show you, that is what it looks like. Once you have done the shoulders, you can see both my shoulder seams are together. We're now gonna place the sleeve perpendicular to the body so there's the seam that we just did on the shoulder and I've just placed my sleeve so it's central to that shoulder seam so you can see from that seam it goes out either side pretty evenly so to help me and to make sure everything's even I'm just going to place some stitch markers I'm just counting out from that shoulder seam that we just did I'm counting out 15 rows down the back panel and then I'm just gonna secure that with a stitch marker. And depending on what size you do, you might wanna count down 16 or 17 or 14, um, but kind of just use the sleeve as your guide. It doesn't need to be an exact amount of rows down. It just needs to be even on the front and the back panels. So now I'm just counting down 15 rows down the front panel, just so that the sleeve is gonna sit at the same point on the front and the back panels. And you can see the stitch markers are now in place. Time to get comfy because we are going to seam the sleeve onto the body. So I'm just grabbing some yarn and my needle. And you can just use your preferred method to sew the sleeve onto the body. And the stitch mark markers come in handy because it just means that everything will be even and neat. Just speeding this up big time so you can still see what I'm doing but it doesn't take a decade because this did take me quite a while. <laughs> and I do apologise about the top of my head.
So you can see I'm just working my way down and as you go make sure that everything's lined up nicely, the stitch markers are still in place. That is one sleeve done and now we need to do the exact same for the other sleeve. Now we have both sleeves attached, this is what it should be looking like so obviously it does not resemble much of a jump up right now but believe me it will and we are so close. So now you need to grab the jump part by the shoulder seams and then line up the jump part so it looks like it would if it was completed. And you also want the right sides facing in and the wrong sides are facing out. So here's mine and you can see the front panel is slightly shorter than the back panel which we did on purpose. We need to seam up the sleeve and down the body. The bit I'm pointing to now, we are going to leave that open. So, you know, if you stop seaming there, that is how much of a slit you will have. If you stop seaming, you know, all the way down, then you'll just, you won't have a slit. You'll just have a tiny bit longer at the back than at the front. If you stop seaming there, then that is how big your slit will be. So it's totally up to you. You can finish seaming wherever you want. I'm just placing a stitch marker where I'm going to finish seaming because I want to have like a decent sized slit up the side of mine. I'm just counting the, the rows as well just to make sure that the front panel and the back panel are lining up nicely. And then because I counted the rows, I can just count up on the other side to make sure that they are completely even on either side. The slits want to be the same. We're going to start from the wrist, work up the sleeve to the armpit and then down the side of the body to wherever your stitch marker is. So I've just started working on the wrist part of the sleeve trying to keep everything as neat as possible, taking my time with it. As you go, just make sure you keep checking that everything is even and lined up properly. Work your way up to the armpit and then down the side to your stitch marker. So here I've stopped seaming and you can see the side split that I've got. I think it looks really good. And here is what the whole thing looks like. So from the sleeve up to the armpit, down the body to where my stitch marker was to leave that open slit and now we need to do the same on the other side so I'm just flipping my work around I've got my stitch marker ready work from the wrist up the sleeve to the armpit down to your stitch marker once you've done that weave in your ends and flip your work right side out baby so I've weaved in all my ends and here is the finished jumper I really hope you like yours if you did get to the end then, well done, you should be really pleased with yourself. It's easy to start a new project, but it's just not easy to finish it all the way through, especially even weaving in those ends, but it's so worth it. If you did like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to see more tutorials from me, um, but enjoy the rest of your day or night whenever you're listening.